So welcome, happy, healthy, beautiful day to you guys. Eric Higgins here, holistic health coach and actor calling out of Portugal. On today's call, we're going to be learning about PTSD, trauma healing, utilizing functional medicine. So this is a big, big uh, struggle for, well, I would say quite a lot of people and more certainly uh, as of late over the last couple of years, the amount of global stress that's been going on in the world. And people do need to heal from this stress. We need to find ways to bring our best self to the table and really deal with this trauma that's, that's almost like a weight around our shoulders. If, if we're dealing with this in a not so healthy way, it's going to hold us back and draw on our life energy. So we want to make sure we protect our life energy, we lean into that darkness, to what's, what's there, and allow ourselves to embrace that change. So my personal goal is to impact the lives of 100,000 people in the next two years Part of that, I'm sure, will be people who have struggled with PTSD, and I'm super pumped to be able to share information with them that's accessible, that's simple, that's powerful, is the real deal. And I have people like Dr. Bob Rakowski, one of the best in the game of functional medicine across the globe, to, uh, to back me up and really partner with me and, and a number of other people who I see on this call as well, because we were, we're here to share solutions. So Dr. Bob, you've, you've had over 33 years in clinical practice now, not head of the Natural Medical Center in Houston, really focusing on a holistic approach of natural medicine, treating world-class athletes, teaching doctors around nutrition, and also helping regular folks to be their absolute best. So what is PTSD, Dr. Bob? And what are some of the signs that people may not be uh, actually dealing with this uh, condition uh, and its own resolve for a period of time. Yeah, you know, let's just firstly go with with the idea of stress. You know, we talked about stress last week, uh, and we know that stress is a circumstance that triggers a fight or flight response in the body, and everything that is not life critical uh, is going to shut down. And so when you when you start looking at that. Brand new data, and I, I pulled up a, a very extensive article on PTSD because it's being studied more and more and more and more and more. And there's behavioral markers, you know, where, where people certainly are going to be hyper vigilant and very irritable, and there's issues with their mood and their their thought process and their sleep, and, and they, they are essentially stuck in a fear circumstance. And you start looking at hormones, you know, cortisol elevates. Uh, and then we've got other things like serotonin and dopamine, which are going to decline the stress hormones, acute stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline increase. Uh, and ultimately people burn out, you know, and the immune system becomes suppressed. And they're beginning to find out that there are certain genetic markers where people are more vulnerable to having a post-traumatic stress disorder. But ultimately, the, you know, there are proposed solutions, and I know at some point you're going to ask me about the medical solutions. Medicine hasn't done very well with this at all, and, and that's where you know, maybe the conversation about functional medicine will come in. But the good news is there, you know, this is not something that is said to be you know, all in your head. <laughs> it absolutely is not, even though the stress response is going to be perception of what you process through your mind. It's a whole body phenomena and people that have serious issues with it, their entire life, their entire wellness is disrupted. Well, actually, when you mentioned that you brought that up about the medical model, Dr. Bob, what, what is their answer to, to this? Is it purely a psychological uh, approach with medications? For the most part, you know, they, they realize that, okay, something absolutely happened uh, and they have a few things that they do, but it's predominantly counseling where they revisit, you know, the, the trauma again and again and again. And there's, there's plenty of people that say that might not be a really good idea. Uh, and then generally speaking, you know, they're, they're talking about medication and, and counseling. Those are the things that go with it. But, uh, you know, one thing I found that's even, you know, John Hopkins says is effective is something called eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. So at least that's something that's going to use physiology to try to train it. But typically antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, uh, and then things that they use to actually create amnesia during sleep because these people tend to have nightmares. 
So, uh, you know, can medication be valuable? Sure. But remember the guideline for medication, lowest dose, shortest duration. And that doesn't seem to be the way that medicines practice. You know, I, I, I have people that they were diagnosed with PTSD and they're still taking brain drugs a decade later. And, you know, was it necessary maybe to help them get out of a, an initial real bad state? Maybe. But a decade later, okay, we probably should have found something in that last decade that would have moved the person forward. Yeah, I had just when you mentioned that, it, it gave me, I had a flashback of a, of a close friend that had a lot of challenges with that when he was, uh, he was growing up and he was recently being given multiple medications and they were pretty strong and the behavioral changes I witnessed were, were quite alarming and, and really upsetting to kind of see someone go through that and not have the not have the holistic support, but also for myself, not knowing how to deal with something like that, that level of hurt. It, 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 I, I think in a way it, it made me more, much more curious about how do I help people find a way in to heal. And I was at the time, I, I think I was way above my pay grade, so to speak, but I, I just didn't know how to deal with that. But I could just see how destructive this other thing was to see a person who was completely removed from themselves and, you know, it was like just seeing a, a almost like a car crash in slow motion. You couldn't grab the other person. You just didn't know how to do it, like a bad dream. So I, I can see how that process, you know, for some people is a way in, but for other people, especially youngsters, wow, uh, it's it's tough. It's very, very tough. But just on the flip side of that, um, well, actually, before I move on to the next question, have, have you any comments for that, uh, Dr. Bob, especially for young people then who are, you know, taking a lot of these heavy drugs that change the chemistry quite significantly and, and have a, a massive knock-on effect for the years down the line. You know, what we kind of talked about uh, on the way is, uh, and I was listening to a podcast also on, on the way in about, you know, the medicalization of society. Uh, and prior to this, you know, whatever you want to call it, the plandemic, scandemic, pandemic, whatever it is, all those languages are being used. They said, we didn't question organizations like John Hopkins and Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic and Stanford and, and World Health Organization until we come to realize that they're all funded by the same source. And, and what this reporter was saying was you follow the money and you find out that the motives seem to be profit driven, which is, you know, never in the best interest of society. And, and suddenly now people are beginning to question medicine. Uh, but what's unquestionable is the guidelines on medication are very, very clear. And I don't know that any doctor would ever argue with it if they had an ounce of common sense, lowest dose, shortest duration. Uh, and you start easy rather than hard. So when you start talking about these kids, putting these kids on these very powerful drugs that will restructure their brain, restructure the, the chemical synapses, change the biochemistry, you know, if you're going to do that, maybe a crisis intervention, fine. But just this last week, a study came out and said, you know what? We now know that depression is not a low serotonin issue. You know, whereas for 30 years or longer, doctors have been selling drugs saying, oh, we'll just block your serotonin reuptake. They're called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And now they find out that's not the case at all. So how fascinating. Uh, and, you know, we'll lead to other things, but you know, Daniel Amen, uh, a board certified psychiatrist that's now that has done over 200,000 brain scans, he can scan a brain and see if this brain has the physical markings of post-traumatic stress. So we see that and we see the circulation and we can even measure the biochemistry, but the solution is not a drug. The solution is love and compassion and exercise and, and, and good nutrition a better brain can solve or at least take the edge off of that problem. And then there might be other solutions for the actual event, at least to, to change your, your perspective of what happened. And what you've just described to me, Dr. Bob, sounds quite simply that holistic approach, that functional medicine approach, looking at root cause and, and looking at all those systems that intertwine in a beautiful way that needs some unraveling. In, in a different approach and a, a very customized approach, if you would. What's the functional medicine uh, approach that you would have then typically for someone who would come in with a high stress situation? Uh, what's the kind of first kind of thing you would do with them apart from have the conversation and, and see where their level of openness is? You know, last, last week I talked about a stress reset, reset where we do melatonin, which puts the brakes on stress on the body. Theanine, which puts the brakes on stress on the body. Ganoderma, preferably the spores that actually lower the stress hormones in circulation 
action, drive the parasympathetic nervous system and calm the mind as well. You know, and the longest I've had anybody do that was 21 days with hourly doses. And the results were beyond amazing. Uh, and I, I'm actually thinking about brain trauma, like a young man that had five different concussions. And, and there, you could probably say there was some post-traumatic stress in that because he thought his life was over. He couldn't concentrate. He felt like he had ice pick in his head, light hurt his eyes, what, you know, was depressed and doctors weren't helping him. Well, when we pulled the plug on stress, everything got better, you know, and, and, and so those are some very powerful things. But ultimately, the functional medicine approach is going to be that we make the brain healthier and reduce the stress in the body by ways that I had suggested. But, you know, I, I, I mentioned last week that one of my mentors is a guy named John Martini. Uh, and, you know, he has this very powerful way of, of sharing. And I'm, I'm actually going to share some slides and go through some steps because it didn't originate with him. But I'll go to, you know, one of our favorites, Napoleon Hill. And one of the things he said was opportunity often comes disguised in the form of misfortune or temporary defeat. Now, we often don't think of misfortune or temporary defeat as being a major stressor. But, you know, if we step it up from there, sometimes the best things that ever uh, that ever come in our life came after something that was really, really harsh for us. Uh, and then fast forward to what Dr. Martini says, you know, he, he loves universal laws and the law of opposites. And when something is really, really bad, think about what Bob Proctor said, somehow there's an equal and opposite good in it. Uh, and I, I looked at one of his podcasts on PTSD uh, and he says, you know what, if there's always an equal and opposite good to bad, why wait for years to go by before you see the good in it? Why not look right now and discover it? Uh, and his next statement, very enlightening, it doesn't take time and space with the aging process to have wisdom. All you have to do is ask the right questions and become aware of it. So, you know, I've done John Martini's breakthrough experience twice. I, I first met him in the late 1980s, and it was either 1989 or 1990 that I did a breakthrough with him. Uh, and he was on his early phases of that. Uh, and you know what? It was amazing the breakthroughs that people had. People thought that something was really, really harsh. He got them to see the good in it. And I did a follow-up. I did in 2021, I did a breakthrough experience with him. Now that one was virtual. The one in person, I have to admit, was better. People had breakthroughs right then and there. I feel blessed that I've never been through a, an absolutely horrific trauma where I'd have post-traumatic stress, but he would tell, uh, you know, and, and this is harsh topic for adult only, but a, a woman who was, you know, kidnapped and gang raped by a motorcycle gang for three days. Uh, and in his breakthrough session, he was able to get her past the post-traumatic stress of that ordeal. And believe it or not, he asked her, okay, you know, universal laws, there had to be some good in it. What good was there? And she said, well, I'm a lot more protective of my daughters. Okay, that's a good start, right? Uh, and then they started edging away from there. And ultimately, he got her to see, you know, by the way, how did that happen? How were you negligent? How were you careless? How did you put yourself in that circumstance? What did you learn? How will you never do that again? How will you protect your loved ones? Uh, and you know what, we can't do it justice in a, in a couple minute exchange. But him telling that story and then me seeing other people that were certainly through harsher things and getting on the backside of it, this is something that I can wholeheartedly and highly recommend. You know, what does this breakthrough cost? I think it was like 1500 bucks uh, and it's two full days and it's two 16 hour days. He's not playing around. You know, we're talking long days and, and he's committed enough to go through it and why he's committed to whoever takes his course, they're going to have their breakthrough and he's got a good track record of that. So I, I would recommend that drdmartini.com or just, you know, Google Dmartini breakthrough and, and people that are really struggling, I'd recommend it. Wow. 16 hours. That's, that is hardcore right there. My goodness. But like you said, once you're invested in something, it's like anything, the experience has to be intense enough to leave that mark. Otherwise it's just a bit on the surface, you know? So obviously if you're in, you're thrown in to that level of environment, it's going to leave uh, that positive impact. When it comes to nutrition, then Dr. Bob for hydration and exercise, how connected and important are those three elements to allow the, the body to really excel and heal? Well, when we start talking about brain health, those are absolutely indisputable. 
Uh, and then so, you know, really good question, whoever asked that, wherever that came from, and it might have come from you, but it's brilliant. So I went to PubMed and I said, okay, what does PubMed actually show? And here's what they show. Exercise absolutely proven uh, as something that reduces the effects of PTSD. Uh, and though, even though they didn't study dietary intervention, what they did find is that the worse the individual's diet, the worse the PTSD. So we could find out that there was a correlation there. And then when we start throwing in the hydration, the brain is the most hydrated organ in the body. And, and so if you, your hydration starts to slip at all, the first thing that actually slips is cognition. And even 1% dehydration starts to have a negative impact on brain function. So you look at those big three and they're going to be absolutely huge. And then if we throw in all seven, the magnificent seven, eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right. You know, part of my seminar that I taught this weekend was about sleep. And I went through, uh, you know, a, a phenomenal book, uh, you know, probably 20 chapters, all the equivalent of a PhD dissertation on why we sleep. Uh, and reality is, you know, sleep exists in every single animal species. And it's one of the most critical things that we can do for brain cleansing, brain immune system, brain healing, uh, brain function. So, you know, and guess what? People that have post-traumatic stress, that can be a challenge for them. That's often one of the things that happen. So maybe there we'll, we'll lean into the medical intervention where they give them a drug that gives them amnesia in their sleep so they don't remember their nightmares. So that might be a prudent use of medication until we get on the other side of that. Yeah, I, I recently uh, revisited a program actually from David Borelli is the name of the therapist. I'm not sure if you're, uh, uh, sorry, Benelli, uh, I, sh I should say. If you're familiar with the therapist, Dr. Bob, but he, he specializes in trauma recovery and trauma release. He, he, you know, he spent a lot of time with different communities around the world where you really went through severe traumas, you know, murder, the, the worst of the worst. And actually as a community base, we go in and actually work with people on solace release techniques, which fascinated me because I had no, I, I was completely ignorant to the fact of the, how we store trauma in the psoas muscle and that the, the body actually changes. We, we change psychologically, the brain chemistry changes, our physiological body changes as well. And it's stored. This is stored in the physical animal. And I know with your expertise in kinesiology as well, Dr. Bob, you, you always look at different mapping and the connections between the systems of the body. Can you just explain to people what the significance is of the psoas muscle when it comes to trauma? And does kinesiology do anything kind of in that line to release uh, the psoas muscle as well? Well, when someone's trained properly, the answer is yes. So when you think of what is the universal response to trauma, it's the fetal position. You know, you, you know, I, I when I would teach stress full day seminars, I'd show a picture of a baseball game where a bat broke and it was flying into the crowd and they were all like this which is automatic. But when you start going into that fetal position, one of the most powerful muscles that engaged is that powerful hip flexor, the psoas. Uh, and if you're constantly, you know, being led to the fetal position, that would become shortened. And then we sit too much anyway. So there's a lot of problems with the psoas uh, as it exists. But, I, you know, when that question came up, I thought, you know, what type of data do we have uh, on this? And, you know, the peer-reviewed medical literature is not real good on it, but there's some practitioners, you know, that have dedicated their whole careers to it. So this is uh, a book entitled The Body Keeps Score, uh, and it talks about the brain, the mind, and the body. Notice what it says in Healing from Trauma. So this is a medical doctor that had dedicated his entire career to this, you know, and here's what he said. Now, body, we get that fetal response in the psoas, but trauma interferes with brain circuits that involve focusing, flexibility, and being able to stay in emotional control. A constant sense of danger and helplessness promotes the continuous secretion of stress hormones. Uh, and then we talked about what that does last week. And here's the deal. If, you're, if you are running on stress hormones, you're destroying everything that keeps you healthy. This is a life critical circumstance. It's like, you know, we've got to turn on all the fire alarms. We shut off digestion, we shut off calmness, we shut off immune system, we shut off repair and, and everything else. And people that are stuck in PTSD, that's the mode they're stuck in. So it's it's a pretty tough circumstance. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what at the time when I saw the, this documentary with this therapist, I was blown away because he, he took a, a whole group of people that were really gone through a lot of different traumatic events and had them on the ground doing these exercises and just seeing that response that release uh, through the psoas muscle where they started to shake and then just, you know, transferred into a fit of giggles almost, which is 
bizarre because well it's not bizarre really because if you're letting something go the, the emotional side of the body kicks in and we we have that release and i had a, a previous experience with a kinesiologist actually dr bob but i didn't realize that uh i had a, a trauma that i i buried that i hadn't really dealt with i got bit twice by a, a rottweiler when i was seven and my cousin's home i was bit on the ankle i wasn't afraid of dogs but uh this therapist was able to gauge through muscle testing that I had an issue back 20 something odd years at the time which led me to be seven years old and I thought wow isn't that interesting <laughs> but I didn't know of anything I couldn't I couldn't gauge I, I, I couldn't recall any trauma at that point in my life and then I really went inside of myself and I realized whoa straight away I was projected back to that moment of of that dog being trapped in a corner fearing for my life as a seven-year-old kid you know seeing this huge dog you know drooling coming at me and I, I just put it to bed I never really thought about it again but at the moment that I started to go into that and that lady took me through this whole process I began to weep uncontrollably weep like a like a child again you know and then I felt great almost like a huge weight that I didn't even realize I was carrying was just lifted but I, I couldn't tell from the outside but I just thought isn't that fascinating that I've been holding that in my physiological body for all that time and it just came out, and, uh, you know, I just thought, wow, isn't that interesting that how complex a creature we are? And I see Shane Joseph just messaged uh, there as well. And the, the chat saying he was in a, a really tough uh, car accident. If there's a question on that, I'll scan back uh, Shane afterwards and address the question. But I just thought, wow, isn't that interesting that we can hold on to those traumas in, in the body? And uh, certainly it's something to pay attention to because I don't believe it's all above the, the shoulders. The answers are all above the shoulders and this this process of looking at the solace release was a was a big eye opener for me but uh just coming back to the questions that i had as well dr bob was when it comes to medicinal mushrooms you see the likes of paul stamets talking about the power of psilocybin how powerful it is for trauma healing and ptsd even though technically it's illegal in most uh countries and states around the world um what is it about psilocybin and the other medicinal mushrooms, Dr. Bob, are so powerful for trauma release and healing? Well, psil psilocybin seems to be the king there. And, and there's a lot of research money going into it. And you can go to PubMed and you can find a whole bunch on it, which is so, so interesting. So again, we have this whole idea of God's pharmacy versus man's pharmacy. Uh, if we can use those terms, and here's what I think. I think God's pharmacy is absolutely superior. Uh, and so, you know, you start going back all of these many, many thousands of years uh, and cultures consistently celebrated ways to alter their consciousness where they felt that they could tap into more. Uh, and there's something about psil psilocybin that is very specific to PTSD, but what, what is the dose that's working? They actually call it microdosing that works really well. So Paul Simon, uh, Paul Stamets has talked about that. Michael Pollan has talked about that. You know, Sachin Patel was asked to head up a psychoactive startup company. You know, so he's consulting in, in Canada and Canada might be ahead of some places in some ways where they're trying to say, look, microdosing ought to be legal for about everybody because the risk is very, very minimal. The benefit extremely, extremely high. And, and that's what we look at. You know, that there's probably less dose to microdosing something like psilocybin than been, believe it or not, even taking aspirin. So you start looking at that and come to realize that nature does have some really good answers, but quite simply, it seems to be very remarkable we'll aid towards what Dr. Martini was saying, see what benefit was there in there. Because, you know, we live in this universe where the law of opposites exists. When something's really, really bad, there's also something really good with it as well. And again, I'll go with John Martini. It doesn't take, you know, five years and a thousand therapists it takes asking the right questions. And again, he seems to be a pro at that. What is the good in this? How did you benefit? There is a benefit, quite simply. Eric, I don't know if you found any benefit of uh, getting bit by the dog. I was bit by a dog too. And I, I've got to tell you, I, I never had a fear of a dog, but after I got bit, uh, I was very cautious, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe there's some value to that. So I think the only benefit that I can really 
share with from that, Dr. Bob, is I, I get hyper aggressive around any aggressive animals. They always oh. show dominance. Anytime an animal oh. is, is aggressive, I'm immediately more, more, I'm bigger. I'm ready to go. Actually, recently our, our own dog was, was lunged at and uh, I, I don't like to hurt animals, but straight away I had, I had to attack that dog and it, it retreated very quickly and it was a big dog. So I think just the awareness of being the aggressor and knowing that, you know, it, there's a time and a place for you to be passive. And there's also a time and a place for you to be hyper aggressive. So thankfully didn't, ha didn't hurt the animal terribly, but it needed to get a reminder that no, you can't come into our space. This is a no go zone. Um, and everyone sh I believe should, should have that level of awareness around them that because this can end up in a massive trauma, you, you you're dealing with a life changing situation. An animal walks in, especially off a lead, you know, what, if, what if that bites you in the face, then you're dealing with your own trauma that you, you didn't uh, prepare for. So just be mindful of that, your own physical body and space how are you projecting yourself? How are you projecting your energy? Because a weak energy or a weak body language will be attacked every every time, especially with an animal who's unhinged or not really controlled. So that would be the, my one benefit, I would say, of that. But that being said, when it comes to reishi, Dr. Bob, I know this is our top superfood we love to share. It also has powerful benefits for calming the nervous system, particularly the mycelium. Um, can you just share some of the data on that, Dr. Bob? What, why is reishi so powerful for calming the brain chemistry and allowing people to really deal with traumas as well. So one of its nicknames is the herb of spiritual potency. Uh, and, and so when you create so much calm in the mind, especially by facilitating GABA, and it does more than that, it improves brain circulation, uh, really good at controlling inflammatory process, buffering the body, stress hormones, et cetera. Those are the primary mechanisms by which people take it. And, you know, often they'll say, you know, I've, I've got a level of mental clarity. That's probably the number one thing I see. But, you know, I recall a, a young girl in Mexico, 15, when I say young, 15 years old, her grandmother had just died. Uh, and, you know, very traumatic, very, very close to grandmother. Uh, and she enjoyed the hot chocolate. And, you know, she was having one morning her second hot chocolate and she just started laughing. And, and her mother looked at her and said, what are you laughing about? She says, I'm just so happy. I don't know. I'm just so happy. And it, how odd that that would happen after grandma passed. But how beautiful that it's known to enhance those happy chemicals like serotonin and dopamine and the calming things like GABA. And so, uh, and even acetylcholine for memory. So, you know, there's so many good things about it. We could probably attempt to list it and we'd be talking for an hour, but here's what we know, 5,000 years of human clinical use, thousands of, of studies. Uh, and, you know, whoever stepped away with the uh, PTSD testimonial, you know, maybe you could share a little bit of that, but here's what I can tell you. We have plenty of people, whatever life stressing circumstances they're, they're working to get through, it seems to be pretty helpful for them. Yeah, what I know of Maddie Jane's story is, you know, that she's obviously in a wheelchair now and she's dealt with a lot of chronic stress and been on, I, I believe, 15 plus medications for a long time. And over the, the last year plus, she has come down pretty much off of all medications. Good health has improved dramatically. Her overall outlook on life has is, is improved dramatically. I also believe she's starting to share this as a, as a business also because she's had such a dramatic turnaround in her overall well-being. And uh, obviously having being, being in that situation where you're, you're in a wheelchair must be very psychologically challenging at times. And for her to really articulate it in such a way that she feels much better in herself and she's found a, a part of herself that she feels was was kind of lost so i thought that was beautiful to hear that so I'm, i might actually get manny jane on a, on a call one day alive and actually get her to to share that full full testimony but just lovely to hear those kind of testimonies coming through but not all reishi or not all medicinal mushrooms or not anything really is made equal in this life because it's the environment it's grown it's the quality testing it's the purity but also the delivery system now we've partnerships with organo full disclosure on that that we are brand ambassadors for organo reishi infused products because they are, we believe, to be the best quality and taste that is possibly out there. But also the delivery system is so clever of coffee and tea. So the health is in the habit. But what is so unique about Organo Supply, Dr. Bob, that really puts our partners ahead of the rest, so to speak? So one, you know, you look at our founder, Bernie Shua, that literally spent his lifetime trying to figure out how to bring the treasures of the earth to the people of the earth. So two different patented processes, you know, one by which they extract the nutrients from the spores, which are the most nutrient dense, but the hardest to get the nutrition from. Uh, and so, you know, 99.9% .9 nutrient bioavailability compared to the next closest competitor, 15%. 
Uh, and then if you're even looking at the mycelium or the Ganoderma lucidum, what, we, what they have is a patented process by which they alkalize the coffee, which is going to optimize the effectiveness of, of what's delivered there. And, you know, when you talk about it being the best, you know, listen, I've, I've had plenty of people that said, look, there, there's people that claim to have a better product. I say, try them side by side, see what you see. Uh, and to the person, they all agree. You know, you put them side by side and ours is clearly the best. And then the, the magic of the delivery system, you know, when you do something consistently, you get that compound effect. In this part of the world, the average coffee drinker drinks 3.3 cups a day. If we go to Finland, it's nine cups a day. That, those better choices compound to make a massive difference in health and wellness and, you know, even brain stress and brain recovery. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sensational to realize that, you know, this, this was harvested, uh, this is grown for thousands of years in very specific growing temperatures and the convenience of having this incredible superfood in a daily habit of, of coffee. It, it's, it, it's like, I believe the best health concept ever. I'm biased, but you, you, you put it to the test, experience Trump, Trump's knowledge, guys, if you're looking at this. Uh, so I just want to uh, comment here, just have a, a comment in here from Shane Joseph. I want to come back to here, Dr. Bobby, if you can make a comment on this, would be great. And Guys, if you do have questions on Zoom or on Instagram, just put them in the chat and I'll get to them. Uh, but Shane, as just mentioned, uh, I've had a traumatic, a traumatic brain injury just over two years ago when I was hit by a, by a car. Afterwards, I had terrible memory, sensitivity to light, constant headaches. Fortunately, given time, all that improved. Currently, though, I have a lot of stress from different places and all those symptoms have come back in force. I also have a lot of nightmares for two over two years and after they went away with therapy, but now have come back uh, even though my current stress hasn't anything to do with the initial accident. Um, the nightmares helped me remember the accident, which in the long run was actually beneficial for recovery. So, you know, what, what advice would you give to Shane Joseph in that situation, Dr. Bob? Obviously, there's, there's something there that's not fully sure. conquered. Well, everything matters, you know, so when you've had a traumatic brain injury, you have to have recovery. And, you know, I showed a video of a gentleman named Michael Morris that his brain injury was so bad, they called his kids into the uh, intensive care unit and said, say goodbye to your dad, he's not going to live through the night. Uh, and then on the video, he says, you know, 23 days later, I felt good enough to jog home from the hospital. And then they said, okay, you're never going to get the cognition back. But, you know, by the end of the year, he won an award from a major bank as a banker. So his cognition came back beautifully. Uh, and when there's that brain trauma, there, there are problems. And, and so one of the things about the Ganoderma lucidum, it has what are known as proteolytic enzymes that are known to dissolve scar tissue like amyloid plaque. Uh, and the nice thing about Michael Morris, the guy I'm giving the, the testimonial on now, he was taking reishi and drinking drinking reishi coffee, et cetera, at the time of his injury. So he had that on board to start that process, but better late than never. So I would do that consistently. And, and then on our Instagram, I see that uh, Camila Heiler, uh, Heiler, one of our amazing partners in Sweden, she's actually created a stress reset drop where she combines the melatonin, theanine, and, and some other adaptogens. Uh, and, you know, we don't really sell anything here, but you want to check out Green Coast, Dream Coast, uh, one word, dream, and then coast, like, you know, whatever the coast you're talking about where land meets water, uh, dot S-E, you know, you'll see that she's got these phenomenal drops and I'll give her a big shout out. You know, I've taught my stress reset around the world for 15 years to some of the top nutrition companies. Nobody found a way to blend this together, but she did that. And then the Ganoderma spores would be separate. So, you know, whoever referred you to this, and it might be Eric Higgins, go back and say, Hey, I want to get some of those spores too. The longest I ever put anybody on a stress reset was 21 days, taking things every waking hour. But this was, again, multiple traumatic uh, head injury that resolved, literally resolved. I asked him, zero, no change, 100, perfect ideal. How much better are you? 100% at 21 days. So we'd love to see you get there too. Uh, now, some of the other components of PTSD, again, I will highly recommend Dr. John Martini's Breakthrough Experience. He's going to ask you some tough questions and he's going to ask you to go soul searching. Uh, and, you know, most people that have had a serious trauma, it's not an easy exercise to go through, but to the person, they, they report that it's worthwhile. Excellent. I will check out that Dream Coast uh, as well. Camilla, are we interested actually in that if you, you ship to other parts of Europe? as I know uh, certain components of it aren't over the counter. Uh, but I, I see a question here on Zoom um, from John. Uh, Hi, Dr. Bob, can I ask what product of OG is good uh, for a diabetic customer? Yeah, and so really any of them. So what's your, what's your choice? I, I would tend to stay away from sugar, even though ratio is profoundly sugar friendly. 
you know, my, my diabetics, even insulin dependent diabetics, they ask, can I drink the mocha? I say, I don't know, let's ask your body. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way we ask the body is we get a sugar baseline and then we have them drink the mocha and 45 minutes later, we test their sugar and it's amazing. So even our mocha raises the blood sugar about the level of, of broccoli and chicken, which is a very sugar friendly meal. Uh, and then it's got at least half a dozen different anti-diabetic benefits. So whatever you'll do consistently is going to be best. But again, you know, we start looking at the global impact of a stress reset. And since stress is our topic, you know, it, it's my go-to when it doesn't matter really what case I'm working on. Someone says, I'm elite and I want to get more elite. What do I do? Stress reset. I'm sick. I don't want to be sick anymore. What do I do? Stress reset. We might add a few other things in too. So those are really, really powerful. But all of the OG products are, are supremely good for blood sugar regulation and diabetes. Excellent. I see another question here as well, uh, Dr. Bob, when a person is always feeling stressed because of a hectic and busy life, is this related to PTSD? Or what would your advice be? And what nutrition would you recommend? Thanks from Molly. Well, hectic and busy is it doesn't necessarily qualify as a, a trauma. You know, I mean, so it has to be one of those really vivid life altering things that you either experience witness uh, or, you know, one of the things they found out is we, we had a, a terrorist attack at a Boston Marathon. There was a bomb that went off and, you know, several people were killed and more injured. But the constant negative news here at CNN, CNN, uh, people that watch six or more hours of CNN about the coverage of the Boston Marathon bombing had more post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, more severe and longer lasting and more intense than people that were actually at the event. So if you think about it, if there's a trauma, it happens. And a, a bomb, how long is that over? We're talking microseconds. But to relive that for six hours on CNN and really get into depth of uh, you know people that are su suffering and struggling because of it, you know, just say no to news. You know, it, it's it's not good news. It's bad news. If it bleeds, it leads. And so we want to get away from that mindset. And, and again, I, I think over these last couple of years, people are waking up and saying, what's the purpose of the news? Oh, to hijack my brain with, with very disturbing information so they get my attention. Because let's face it, we're all on, the, on guard for what will hurt us. So we're attracted to Two, you know, things that are dangerous, at least to be aware of it. And that's how news calls us in. And as one of my mentors said, if you know, if you look at all the good in the world compared to all the bad, all the bad is just a blip on the screen. And there is so much good. And what we need to do is magnify that and optimize it in all of our lives. And I think our world will be better for it. So guys, we're just coming to the end of the call. Uh, really great topic. I think a necessary topic as well. I'm sure we will revisit this maybe later in the year as well for people who have missed it, or maybe we'll address different questions you guys may have. And if there's anything that you would like to ask Dr. Bob in after this call, just let him know. You can reach out to him on obviously on Instagram. There is a great place to get him. Our call for next week is going to be around reducing toxic overload with functional medicine. So toxins are such a big problem. I, I think you said over 87,000 or 80,000 registered chemicals now in the world and probably climbing Dr. Bob, something crazy like that. Well, they are climbing. And, and you know what, when they do toxicology, studies, they say, okay, this could be toxic. Let's study this. But they don't add it to the other 79,999 to see what they're like in combination. Human toxin inventory shows that everybody walking around has at least 700 toxins. And you know what? A toxin is a poison. So low level poison, more of it adds up and it just is not good for the world. We know it. Mm. And anyone who's dealing with any PTSD related traumas as well, you add that on to the toxic load. Wow. You're dealing with a whole other level of, of stress. So let's clear out that system. Let's do what we can. Obviously we're living in a toxic world. We can't be completely untouched, but I believe we can take strategic steps on a daily basis, starting small, making those micro adjustments, being good to yourself, asking yourself, is what I'm about to do bringing me closer to who I want to be or further away every single day? And at the end of the day, no one can tell you what to do. You're your own person. You can tell you what to do. That's it. So if you want to make better choices, better changes in your life, then take some of the advice that we've, we've shared with you today. You know, something simple. Start simple. And I think there's nothing more simple than ratio infused coffee and tea to shift the balance, get you back to where you should be. And the rest you will figure out with good counsel. So Dr. Bob, thank you so much for this call. Lots of knowledge bombs dropped in here today. Thank you guys for joining us on Instagram joining us on Zoom. So great to have you guys on this call live. 
Well, Eric, you know, when we start talking about PTSD or just stress in general, I, I think it's always been the number one cause of death on the planet. Uh, and, and so it's good to bring it into the light. And it's so good that medical studies are showing, no, it's not all in our head. It's a whole body phenomena. And how nice of you to ask the questions in a way that, yeah, working with the body can help the mind, working with the mind can help the body, vice versa. I'm going to recommend a stress reset for everybody. And you know what? Reishi is a critical part of all of that. And, you know, someday we're going to come around and we're going to get to study and realize that, wow, it's good for PTSD, generalized stress, generalized anxiety, depression. Those are already covered. Uh, but soon enough, the data is emerging. What we have to offer is really, really good. So thanks for joining us and have a good evening or a good afternoon. And God bless all, always.